Welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Have I got a great recipe for you today. Okay, long time no see. I had to take about a good month off because I was so tired and I needed the rest. So now that I'm back, let's get started with the uh, recipe I'm going to be making for today. I'm going to make sirloin steak. I really wanted to use a thinner cut on a round steak, but they didn't have it at the supermarket. So I ended up getting this and I can make this work. Now, when you look at this steak and you see the little streaks of fat that's running through it, that's a good thing because that helps to tenderize your meat. If you get your meat that's one big lump of lean, it's harder to tenderize than if you have the fat running through it because the fat helps to make it juicy. Now, the seasonings that we're going to be using today is I'm going to use the onion and garlic mix. You can use it separate. If you got onion powder and garlic powder, just go ahead and use it. But this is the onion and garlic mix. I'm going to use caña asada. And that's just a, it's really a Mexican seasoning when for uh, that you can use on steak. But this has everything that's not in here. So it has the paprika. It has the um, salt, the pepper, all of those spices, chili powder, all of those spices. You don't have to use it, but this is just added uh, to bring in more flavor. And I'm going to use some salt. Now, there's pepper in here, so I don't need to use pepper. So I'm just going with the salt. And I'm going to slice up this onion for my gravy, and I'm going to use that. All I need is a tad bit of cooking oil over in my skillet to help fry up this meat. And I'm going to be using, of course, some flour to help to coat my meat with. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to cut this into portions. Okay, so uh, this one will probably be cut into like three different por portions. I'm going to use my cutting shears. And I'm going to do the same for the other two that I have back here. I'm going to wash it off, pat dry. And when I come back, we'll be ready to go ahead and cook this steak be right back all right now i'm at the stove so i put a little bit of oil in here that's just so i can cook up uh my onions and then i'm gonna sit them to the side so that i could cook up my steak now in this glass here i have two tablespoons of flour it's just regular flour i'm gonna add just a little bit of carnation milk to that because i like for my um my gravy i like for it to be creamy now along with that i'm going to add a cup of water now i'm going to stir this why am i doing this in advance i'm doing it in advance because i want all of the lumps out of the flour so if i do it before i start to cook my onions as well as my steak by the time i get ready to make my gravy all of the lumps will be out of the flour and i'll show you that so i'm going to sit that to the side and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to saute up my onions. Now, I had a little bit of seasonings left. This is the seasonings that you saw me with. And I'm just going to take that and put it over in my gravy when I get ready to make that. So, I'm going to up, saute up the onions. It should take me about five minutes. And once I get them all sauteed up, I'll bring you back. I want to let you know that the oil that I'm using, that's used cooking oil. So, that would be like... Uh, cooking oil that I fried chicken in or I fried bacon in and that gives good flavor when you're making gravy and when you're sauteing up onions so I'm gonna go away get this all sauteed up and I'll bring you right back okay now this is as limp as I want my onions to get so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these onions and once I get them removed I'll bring you back so I can add my steak be right back maybe not that long Okay, now I'm back and I'm going to add some more of my used cooking oil. And I keep my used cooking oil in a tea kettle. It would be nice if you could keep it in a tea kettle or in a coffee pot. The reason be is because there's a little strainer in here. And what happens is it strains all of the granules out. So all you'll be getting is just the cooking oil. Okay, so that's going to heat up. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to put in my steak now all i want to do is just get a crust on my steak i don't want to cook it all the way through because it's going to get a lot of the cooking done in the gravy 
So all I want to do is just get a little bit of a crust on it. So you want to put it in, but you don't want to crowd your pan. So when I get ready to flip this over, I'm going to bring you back. And I'm going to show you when I flip it, then I'll cook it, cook all of it, and then we'll go to the next step. Be right back. Okay, now I'm back, and I'm getting ready to flip the steak. So you see that color is not too dark. I just want to flip it to get like a crust on it. So I'm going to flip this. And then I'm going to take it out. But that's all the dark you need. And the reason for that is because it's going to do a lot of the cooking when it gets in the gravy. So all you want to do is kind of brown it and get a crust on, brown it, I'm sorry, and get a crust on your uh, meat so that that will be good flavoring and it will be good to thicken up your gravy when you're putting it in the smothering part. So I'll bring it back when I move to the next step. Be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have the last two pieces of steak. They're cooking up and once they get uh, cooked up, then I'll bring it back and I'll show you me putting the gravy together. But here is, remember the flour water and I told you and it's got a couple of specks in it. That's only from the season because I use the same spoon. But if you see, there's my flour mixture, there's my water, this is my flour and my milk, and there's my water. So I'm going to stir all of that up together. And if you will look at this, those lumps that I had, see those lumps are gone? I don't have those lumps anymore. And that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that this had a chance to dissolve. My flour had a chance to dissolve. Now what I'm going to do here is, this was my leftover seasoning, and I'm going to take it, I'm just going to put it on top of the onions, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this is too much cooking oil. In order to make gravy, I don't need that much, so what I want to do is to pour some out, but I also want to show you this. You see these granules that are down in here, you don't want to wash this pan, and you don't want to throw that out, because this is the best flavoring for your gravy. So you just want to put it wherever you have your, your steak at. Don't worry about, oh, this pan is going to be so hard for me to wash. This is a stainless steel pan, and of course I'm using a fork in it, but it's not going to damage the surface of this. But this is not going to be hard to wash because what's going to happen is once I add the liquids to that, it's going to lift all of this that's in the bottom of the pan. And if I can show it to you, I will. But you see this? Do not throw that out of your pan because that's some of the best gravy you ever want to eat. So I'm going to finish cooking up these two pieces. That's all I have. And then I'll bring it back when I get ready to mix the, uh, the flour water with everything else in order to make the gravy. I'll bring you right back. Okay, now I poured out that cooking oil. So you see, I have just a small amount of oil down over here. I still have all of my granules that's left from my skillet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my flour water. I want to give it just a little bit of a stir. Now, it's, as you can see, it is thickened up. See how it is? Okay. Now, all of that is, is thickening up, but it's also sticking to the bottom of my pan. So now I'm going to go ahead and add this water. I have about three cups of water. May have been a little bit more in there. I'm going to add it all. And don't worry about having that much water over in here because the only thing it's going to do is it's going to make you that much more gravy. And the gravy, by pulling up all of the granules, is going to be equally as good. Now it's lifting now. That that was in the bottom is lifting. And I don't think that I can show it. See, you can see how it's lifting. See, it's going to lifting because that's that liquid and all of this is gonna be smooth. Don't worry about how it looks now. When I finish with it, it's gonna be smooth. Now what I'm gonna do before I add my steak back into this, I'm gonna let this come up to a little bit of a boil. You don't have to do that. 
you can just go ahead and add your steak and let it boil and let all of this disappear while your steak is in there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to a little bit of boil and then I'll bring it back when I get ready to add my steak to it. Be right back. Okay, as you can see, this is real watery. That's just the way you want it. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and you're going to start to add your steak back over in. And sometimes they ask me, how does your steak, how does your gravy turn brown? Well, you've seen all of those, um, all of the the particles that was in the bottom of, the, of my skillet. That was what helped my steak to turn, my gravy, I'm sorry, to turn brown. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put all of my steak back in here. And when I come back, this is going to be a very rich and thick gravy because you have all of the flour that's on the steak that's going to cook into this gravy. Okay. These were all of the little granules that was in the bottom. This was my leftover grease. You see, I took it out. Okay, now normally, I wanted to tell you this. I kept forgetting. Normally, I will use this flour in order to make my flour water. I don't need to add some extra flour. I can just use it. There's nothing wrong with this flour, even though this was a flour that I shook uh, my steak up in. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and you can use it. The little bit of seasoning that I had, I'm going to go ahead and put them back down over here. And you can tell from when I scrape the bottom of the pan, which I'll do right now. Um, okay, when I scrape the bottom of the pan, see that? That means my granules are up. Where are they? They're all into my gravy. Okay, so I'm going to let this cook. You see this thickening up. I'm going to let this cook. I'm going to add a little bit of water. It's not going to hurt it. As long as you have enough seasoning in there, that water's not going to hurt it. The only thing that water's going to do is to tenderize my steak. Now, by the time I come back, I'm having with this some rice, and I'm having some green peas and some biscuits with this. And while I'm gone, I'm going to go ahead and make me a peach cobbler. And I'll be right back once this cooks down. Be back. Okay, now I'm back and my steak is ready. So I have green peas here. I have rice here. I have biscuits over here. And I topped it off with this steak and I got a peach cobbler in the oven. And normally I don't cook like this on a Monday. so But I had a taste for peach cobbler, so I cooked it. And if you can watch, you see how my... Uh, ladle is just going through the bottom. That's because all of the um, granules that was on the bottom, they're all in the gravy. Okay? And look at that gravy. I told you how this is going to turn out. Let's see if we can do this with a fork. Look at that. That's the way you want your gravy. And whether you sop it up or you eat it straight, this is some good gravy right here. I think that if you tried this recipe, you're truly going to enjoy it. I did not dish it up because I'm waiting on that peach cobbler. Let me try to see if I can cut a piece of this steak, which I know I can. <laughs> there it is. See, I cut it with my fork. That's exactly how you want it. Now, this was three-fourths of an inch thick, so that's, that has to really be tender. So I cooked it long enough for it to be tender, made it with the gravy. I think, again, if you try it, you're truly going to enjoy it. I know I will, waiting on my peach cobbler. That's why I'm not dishing up a plate. But as always, thank you for watching. Chris Cook for you, too. Bye. Please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Chris Cook for YouTube. And don't forget to share this video. Bye.